an exceptional young lady. I haven't known Jimbo as quite as long as I have Chester, but I have learned that he is a, a man of, of depth in his word, uh, his knowledge of the word of God, and knowing what he believes and standing on the word of God. I love Jimbo. He's just kind of become a part of our family around here. And we love him and thank God that you have found a godly man. You come from good stock. Her granddad, who sits here today, was the secretary of this church for over 40 years. Her grandmother passed away. The ones that are in this church. But I will tell you that her mom and dad are some of the most faithful people that have ever been at Christian Life Church. And I have watched them go through mountains and valleys and trials. And you come from good stock. Your dad is one of the most courageous men I've ever met in my life and has great, great faith. And I, I acknowledge that today. And uh, your mother is an exceptional lady. So, with all of that said, let me say a few things to you today. And I know, I know, there's, there's been a lot said, but I'm going to take my time to say what I got to say. I'll just get you up back to crackers and hold on here. <laughs> Amen. I, 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 from my heart today, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I am, I am deeply moved at, at this day because... Just before this wedding today, we were called into the bride's room where Jessalyn was ready and Jimbo was there. And, and she told us the story of how she had a prayer cloth for many years and suddenly that prayer cloth went missing here a few months ago. But she had another one. And we all, all five of the ministers here, prayed over that prayer cloth. That God would bless her home. God would bless her marriage. And God would bless her family. And I believe he's going to do exactly that. So we've come to this house today to celebrate the marriage of Jimbo and Jessalyn. And it's very fitting and proper that this marriage ceremony be celebrated in this house because you are both the children of God and this is the house of God. Not only do you acknowledge his claim on you, but you seek his will. And I, one of the ministers has already said it, I believe, Brother Haygood, it's not the permissive will. I believe you're standing today in the perfect will of God. So since God himself sanctified marriage when he brought together the first man and the first woman, and since the word of God speaks often of the honor and the correctness of marriage, and because God promises blessings on those who are faithful to him and to each other, this then is a high and holy time for these children of God and for, the, for all who love them and share their hopes, prayers, and aspirations for a Christ-centered home and marriage. The most important step in a person's life other than him coming to the Lord and, and believing in God and receiving the experience of the Holy Ghost and being baptized in His name is the decision to link that life to another in marriage. And many people come to marriage with high expectations but wrong expectations. True love and true marriage is a lifetime of giving for love is something you do. It was J. Allen Peterson that said in his book titled The Myth of Greener Grass, he said marriage is an empty box. There's nothing in it. It's an opportunity to put something in it. To do something for marriage. Marriage was never intended to do anything for anybody. People are expected to do something for marriage. Love isn't in marriage. It is in people. And people put love into marriage. I thought that was an awesome quote. Marriage then takes on a certain amount of maturity and understanding that it is more than an event or an emotion. It is the giving of oneself to another for their highest and best welfare. Therefore, it should be should not be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but discreetly, soberly, 
and in the guidance and counsel of the Holy Spirit. All who come to the marriage altar desire to have a happy marriage. It has been said that the nearest place to heaven in this world is a God-centered home, and I believe that. The opposite is also true. The nearest place to hell on earth is a house where hatred, bitterness, and strife are prominent. More stars are put upon a person's character and heart in an unhappy home than any other place I know. Someone said that a home ruled by God's Word is a place where angels may be asked to stay with us and they would not find themselves out of place. I know that is the kind of home that you both desire. You want heaven in your home. You certainly don't want hell in your home. There are three ingredients that are needed in every marriage in order to put heaven in your home and I'd like to give them to you very quickly today. The first one is a present or a gift. Presents are important to commemorate special occasions. Don't forget the chocolates. And don't forget the roses, Jimbo. Don't neglect the giving of presents to each other. They're important. But don't forget that presents are non-material. The giving of yourself, your personhood, your time, your words like, I love you and I'm sorry. The gift of total commitment, the gift of praying for each other, the gift of unselfishness, the gift of desiring that the other make becomes all he or she is capable of becoming in Christ. Our Lord taught us this lifestyle when he gave us this scripture. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And the second ingredient is purpose. Everyone needs a purpose. Every couple needs a purpose. Marriage is not two people standing eye to eye, but shoulder to shoulder, looking to similar goals. Competition is good in many areas, but it will kill a marriage. By meaningful worship, prayer, a lot of communication, you will discover God's purpose for your life and your home. And I remind you to obey Jesus who said it this way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And the last ingredient is that of power. The power is a person. His name is Jesus Christ. The word home in one nation means a shrine of God's. In the Christian life, it means the place where Jesus Christ is Lord. There cannot be a successful home if money, prestige, activity, or even people are more important than Jesus Christ. Without Christ as the head of your heart and home, your marriage will probably fail. But with Christ as the power in your heart and in your home, your marriage cannot fail. Jesus promised. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Heaven in the home. You can have it with the ingredients of, of a present and a purpose and a power. So believing that both of you understand this and believing that you do not take this step lightly and believing that you accept each other in a spirit of prayer and declare your marriage before God to be an act of worship. You will now take the wedding vows. Will you please join hands? Jimbo, repeat after me. I, Jimbo Yoko. I, Jimbo Yoko. Take you, Jesslyn Bush. Take you, Jesslyn Bush. As my lawful wife. As my lawful wife. To walk beside me when things are good. To walk beside me when things are good. And when things are bad. And when things are bad. I pledge to you. I pledge to you. My undying love and faithfulness. My undying love and faithfulness. All I have. All I have. Or hope to have. Or hope to have. I give to you as my life partner. I give to you as my life partner. I pledge you my help until you. death separates. Ask God's help in keeping this solemn vow. And I ask God's help in keeping this solemn vow. Jessalyn, would you repeat after me? I, Jessalyn Bush. I, Jessalyn Bush. Take thee, Jimbo Yoko. Take thee, Jimbo Yoko. As my lawful husband. To walk beside me when things are good. To walk beside me when things are good. And when things are bad. And when things are bad. 
I pledge to you my undying love and constant faithfulness. All I have or hope to have, I give to you as my life partner. I pledge to, to you my help, my support, my submission, my love, and my prayers. I pledge to remain faithfully yours until death separates us. I ask God's help in keeping this solemn vow. Well, we cried enough, so we need more of that. And uh, we've had a lot of preaching, we don't need any more of that. But I do have some things to say. I think it's <laughs> right. We spent a lot of our time and a lot of memories out on the campground. And I'll never forget the time at the talent show at Crusader Camp. When Brother Jim Lowe commits to break dance into rap music <laughs> on stage, that was his talent, he said. They shut him down. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. No appreciation for the talent. <laughs> I'll never forget we were in Boy's dorm and I was, I got the phone call and I'd gone in the kitchen and shut the door. It was a very, very important phone call from a very, very important person, Brother Jim Hart. And I was really, you know, happy that I got it. I was sitting on the couch, you know, and going through this big spiritual conversation with him. And in comes Jim Bob. And here I am on the couch, and he gets out in front of me and commits to doing some kind of seductive dance and starts stripping off his clothes. <laughs> I mean, the shirt went, the pants went. Thank God he kept his underwear on. <laughs> I told Brother Arnold Bones, I. I just can't hardly talk, brother. I got a young man here strip dancing in front of me. <laughs> I learned a long time ago, though, that uh, we just play jokes on each other. And I learned, brother Chance, he, he can willing to do things I'm not willing to do. <laughs> he can go further than I can go. I still have to remain the pastor. <laughs> but there's a lot of things, and I come into my kitchen one day there, and put on the light and turn the kitchen sink on in my office and Brother Jimbo had put tape around the sprayer and had it pointed right at me. <laughs> and before I could realize what happened, he done got my suit wet. <laughs> so I, I, I stood there that day and I thought, man, I can't, I can't rattle with this guy. He, he's got me. Hey, I, I never admitted that. I, I, I didn't make a that. Yeah, well, I think it was you. <laughs> And then there was that day after he started dating Jessalyn that she came in and drowned in his goldfish. <laughs> we know she did it. He had a goldfish on his desk in his office at the church and we come in that thing was floating. And the Lord revealed to me then who the culprit was. That she had held that thing under the water and drowned it. And it took me a while to get over that. It took place right there in the church. But, Oh, he can say a lot of funny things. And, uh, I, I can't say more because he'll get me back, and I know it. So, But uh, some has mentioned about Jimbo's challenges that he, he's had. And, um, here, however long ago it was, I was asked by Jimbo to write a letter of recommendation for law school. And uh, so I, I started in talking about, you know, from his very birth and some of the surgeries he's had, and many of you may not know. And then he had the problems with his eyes that we thought was macular degeneration, but I think they later decided it was something else. And so he had all these challenges that he had to climb over to be a success. And so it, it was very easy to write the truth. And when I got the letter written and then got to looking at it, I said, I hope this doesn't hurt him. I hurt his chances at the school. Maybe I hope they don't turn him away and think he's not capable. I'm going to tell you what, for whatever challenge Jim Boy ever had, disability he ever had in his eyes, the man compensated for it other ways. Now, if you, you see my notes, my notes for the preacher are typed out, outline form. Jimbo comes to the platform, he's got one piece of paper, and it's got probably six words on it, 
written in two inch letters. <laughs> and uh, I am in the habit, when he's going to want to have him preach, he sets his notes over there with the Bible. I have hit him a few times. So if he couldn't find them, until... <laughs> So we were constantly doing this, but uh, um, he did get accepted in law school. And um, he's one of the smartest men I, I know, really. And, but his smartest decision, I think, was this. I think I really do believe it. Amen. Well, Marilyn Monroe said that diamonds are a girl's best friend. And Frederick the Great said that a man's best friend is a dog. I'm convinced in my own marriage, and I'm convinced in this marriage, that that is not true. That your best friend is each other. As long as, I know a lot of husbands and wives aren't best friends. In fact, they don't even like each other. But you love each other and you like each other. And be best friends. So the ring, I hope it has a diamond on it. It did last time I saw it. I don't know. It's not cubic zirconia, is it? Okay. So that ring won't be your best friend. He will. And whatever kind of pets you might have out in the yard, they're not going to be your best friend. She will. And that's what will stick it through. A three-fold cord is not easily broken. Huh? So she killed my pet. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> What's that word, Bert? He loved that fish. I don't know how you grab a goldfish, but she accomplished it. But uh, be best friends, and the ring we put on today is an unending symbol of eternal love that's around and design the beginning or the end. And that's what this relationship would be. Um, Jim, what do you have a ring? If you take it and put it on the third finger of her left hand and repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. I thee with. I thee with. With all my possessions. With all my possessions. I thee and thou. I thee and thou. That's what you have a ring. After me, with this ring, with this ring, I thee with, and I also promise to clean all the deer you kill. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let's back up, okay? Let's start. Let's start up, okay? All right. With this ring, I thee with, all my possessions, I thee in town. Will you bow your heads, dear Lord? We pray for this couple. Not only that they'll have a happy marriage, God, and a happy family, God, but that you would be at the center of it, Lord. And I pray that you would order their footsteps, Lord, and give them favor in their life, Lord, and promote them into your divine and perfect will, God. And we plead the blood over them in this marriage, God, and we pray for the happiness that only comes from you and be present between them, Lord. We thank you for the couple, the lives that they've led, and we thank you for their parents that have created such fine young people. Lord, we put them into your hands today to tie this knot with your eternal love, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Jimbo and Jessica, today you've made a lifelong commitment to each other. You have unashamedly shared vows. You've given beautiful rings as a public demonstration of your love. You take a communion together. Believing that it is your desire to have a happy home built on the Lordship of Jesus Christ by the laws of the state of Louisiana, sanctioned by the divine authority of the Almighty God, it is my joy as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ to pronounce that from this moment you are now husband and wife. And what the Lord hath joined together, let not man put asunder. May the Lord bless you always, in all ways. And I have one other word that I'm going to say it you didn't want me to, but I am. This is what a blind date will get you. <laughs> Can't help it. You may salute the bride. <laughs> Gentlemen, 
I now present to you with great privilege, Mr. and Mrs. Jimbo Yoko. <laughs> 